Three, two. Hello, Philip, and welcome to the better edition of the vlog, where we do in one take, and the editing doesn't look like a rabbit that can push through an industrial mincer. Okay, let's enjoy my talky talk for a while because that's all you're going to get until the GCSEs are finished. So anyway, I want to talk about a couple of things because I've been at home all alone. I've been watching a lot of these movies and other movies that are over there. And there are a lot more movies over there, but I refuse to show them because they make me seem like a spotty weirdo nerd nerd weirdo. Anyway, um, one of the movies I watched, I watched it last night and I realised how much I like the movie is My Neighbours the Yamadas, which is basically this weird stylized um, movie, which is basically just little skits and sketches about mundanity and how families work and all this stuff and it was very surprising because it was very surprising because when I first watched it it was kind of just okay and then when I watched it a second time it got a bit better and when my third time I watched it it got really good and it's one of those films that I kind of enjoy more and more I watch it because I become more knowledgeable about the characters and how everything works and the thing all together. They kind of made me appreciate mundanity as far as, you know, it goes. Because lots of people try and say that you have to make your life as big as possible. And I think that's complete bullshit because you have to be con content in what you have. I mean, a lot of the movie, a lot of the best movies I've watched about people who themselves have accepted their mundanity and are extremely happy with it. If you take people like The Big Lebowski or... Far, or the movie Fargo, where the people who have aspirations of money and wealth and being extreme entrepreneurial or just living their lives to an extreme quality with all this money and all this stuff are the people who end up getting killed or having shit lives. And the only character, one of the characters who is very content in what she has is the main character and she is the one that we see all the things from and she is objectively the hero of the story. So anyway, uh, it made me sort of think about how mundanity is and how, and I remember I remember once when I was a kid and when I was a kid I was pretty stupid but uh, I'm still pretty stupid and you weren't a stupid kid because you were like you're like Einstein's brain spur and you were just like I know all the things and your parents were like that's great Philip but you know more xbox because you know all the things and you no longer need xbox so here's here go and learn more of all the things and you were like fine parents i will go and learn all the things so that's it and i've lov lovely i've segued into another thing i would like to talk about which is how smart how much smarter you are than me i want to make it very clear right now to everyone who watches that you me and the weird Bangladeshi bloke who is balding around the top. Uh, that's, that's how I see him. Anyway, um, I want to make it very clear to those us three that you are the smarter person. Because one, you, super intelligent, you've got probably better GCSEs than me. You do very well in school and you understand things and I don't. I have more I've never been able to learn very well in my primary school. I had to miss out on a lot of lessons because my school needed me to do extra reading lessons because I was very slow at it. But now I've got books. Um and I grew up being very content in the fact that I was a mediocre student and I always told myself that and but then I got into a private school above all the other people. You were there, weren't you? You were there when I did that. You were, like, sitting next to me, and I copied all of your answers. And then I finally... And then I got into the school. Thanks to you, Philip, because I stole all of your answers. Do you remember that? Me and you were the only two not shitheads in that room. We were just talking, and everyone else was going, Oh, King Cats, whoa! And we were like, yeah! And then we were going, oh! Like friggin' idiots, and they were just bumping into things and going, Ah, oh, this is fucking weird, man. <laughs> we were the only two sensible people in that room who were sitting in the corner discussing philosophy and potatoes, and for some other reason you wouldn't shut up about Ahmed the dead terrorist. So, anyway, um, I was on talking about, so yes, the fact that you're smarter than me, and all that lovely other stuff. Now, 
I also hinted on the fact that I was fairly stupid growing up, and that is 100% true. I did not read that much when I was growing up because I, I read when I was a kid, when I was in primary, when I was before primary school, my parents would um, get me picture books and um, and short and short stories written by classic authors. I mean, one of my favourite stories growing up was The Selfish Giant by Oscar Wilde and The Happy Prince and all that stuff. Um, and I kept on squeezing my hands, and then when I finally got into school, and then I had the reading that I was forced to do in order to achieve intelligence, I think, then I stopped reading, because nothing, because then everything became boring and shit, because all that I was presented with was Jack and Jill fell down tree, and then had happy sausage time, or whatever, all this weird crap, like, um, Brian was in a magic house, and when he went into the magic house, everything was different, and there was a forest, and then he was like, oh, look at Dragon, and then he left, and it was like, there's not, there's not, and it was not as, to the quality that I had expected from reading growing up as a child, and that's a weird thing, but I also still say, and then when I got into year five and six, and then I was supposed to be reading Horrid Henry and Maggot Pie and Polka Goose, and I never really liked those sorts of stories and it wasn't until I got into year seven and then I read Terry Pratchett and Douglas Adams where I started reading again and um I'm trying to make sure this stays under five minutes this time because it's really not good for us it's not good for us at all um do I have any anecdotes no because I have not been doing much um any weird people on ordinary no um do you want to hear something that might destroy your childhood? Basically, do you remember the Wombles who lived in Wembley Park or whatever? Well, all the Womble of Alderney was actually based on the fact that the wo woman who wrote the Wombles lived on Alderney to the end of her life. I lived across from her for a while um, before, you know, she had to go um, into hospital for be because she had dementia and she died at least i think two or two or, or a year ago and i bet you didn't know that but i'm happy to have ruined your childhood so um i will leave you here and au revoir i will write you doctor who poetry if you want tell me in the next video or in the comments below if you if you can fuck okay bye Oh, wait, like, favourite, subscribe, favourite, like, fav subscribe, and follow me on, 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 on Twitter. Is it a bit weird that they're called TwitPix? I mean, that's just, is, 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 is it not an American thing where you call people you don't like twits? I don't know. Okay, bye.